This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the super easy all-in-one platform that will help you build your own website. Stand out and succeed online with Squarespace. Wow, what a great movie. Surely one of my favorites. What an amazing lineup it's been so far. <laughs> and it's only June. I can't wait for what the second half of the year has in store. The bar is dead. How does this get a certified fresh? Guys, I know we hate Disney, but holy shit. How is a random animated Adam Sandler movie from fucking Netflix the highest ranking animated movie of the second half of 2023? I stand corrected. Mutant Mayhem actually came out in August and The Boy and the Heron just recently premiered on December. But you get my point. What the fuck is happening right now? Am I being pranked? 82%! 82! Certified fresh! Are you fucking high? What the fuck? Released back in November 2023, Leo is a movie that follows a 74-year-old lizard trapped as a class pet in a school for decades. But after years of standing by, he finally gathers enough courage to escape and earn his freedom. He's also voiced by Adam Sandler. 1968, 1969, 1970. <laughs> But why? So yeah, if you haven't noticed, I just watched Leo. And thoughts? What do you want to know from me? Ask me. Well, uh, uh, how is it? Hmm? I guess it's fine. Don't get it twisted, it's not actually that bad of a movie. Now, personally, I don't really mind Adam Sandler. He seems like a great guy. His movies, however... <laughs> say I'm a big fan of. This movie really not doing him any favors. But I guess I'm in the minority because apparently a lot of people really like this movie. First thing to note, the movie is actually pretty funny. There's a couple of jokes here that really do catch you off guard that can genuinely give you a chuck. Like there was a visual joke right at the 2 minute and 30 second mark that involved the kindergartner and the gag came out of nowhere. I actually laughed out loud. <laughs> hey, the movie made it funny. It's not my fault I laughed at that shit. Piqued your interest? Well, good. Because if I had to stay up and endure this bullshit all night, then you're goddamn right I'm taking you all down with me. Let's take a look at the certified fresh. Oh, dear lord. That shit really lost all meaning now, hasn't it? This is Netflix's Leo. The movie begins with a citywide shot of Florida. Minus points for Florida. And pretty much immediately, the movie grabs you by the throat, looks you dead straight in the eye, and tells you, You did not see this one coming, and greets you with this. Last year of elementary school, last year of being a kid, being a top. <laughs> <Like you said. laughs> fucking dear Evan Hansen looking ass. It's a fucking musical. It's a musical, everybody. Oh, fuck it. Of course it is. So right off the bat, we get an opening musical number led by the students of the Fort Myers Elementary School. And like most musicals, the opening song introduces us to the main characters. And by main characters, I meant the students of the Fort Myers Elementary School. Yeah, so the movie doesn't really have a solid second lead. We get introduced to these random kid characters that we thought would be one-offs. And in a way, they are. But they actually play major roles for the story. They're, oddly enough, very blatantly stereotypical in one note that you can't help but just know that they're meant to be this way for the sake of the story. Like, a character arc is so very obviously gonna come out of this 100%. And you'd be right, but we'll get to that in a bit. This opening song though... I can try the Kung Pao Chicken! Ugh. Well, in fact, most songs here, they don't sound too good. The songs were clearly made for comedic purposes, but don't get your hopes up. It's not really next level songwriting. They don't really do much with the songs. They're not really clever with the lyrics and the instrumentals are pretty generic at best. But the funny thing is, is that the songs actually flow well with the scenarios in mind. Most of the songs would break out with a new student and the song would somehow encapsulate the personality of that said new student. Like there's this one 
one kid who's known to be a motor mouth, so her song heavily leans towards fast paced singing. Another kid is very tech reliant, so his song is more electronic pop. It's those small things that really gets you to appreciate their effort. But even then, I still think they could have tried a bit harder. It still feels like it's lacking, like they didn't really reach their full potential as an animated musical comedy. Well, anyways, back to the movie. We finally get to meet our main character, Leo, a 74 year old. Um. Tuatara, a lizard, voiced by Adam Sandler. <laughs> I just, I, I, I don't know what to do. He's also accompanied by a fellow turtle named Squirtle, voiced by Bill Burr. Okay, first off, naming your pet turtle Squirtle? W. Secondly, Bill Burr is probably the best thing about this movie. His performance sounds like he's the only one who is actually trying the entire time. He's clearly the best performer out of the entire cast, but that's easily noticeable, especially when your counterpart is Adam Sandler not giving two shits and sounding like an old wet sock. Never knew that. Suck on that, hamsters. Back to the movie, we find out from Miss Salinas that in the end of the school year, the best performing fifth grade class will get a field trip to a place called Magic Land Park. Zane, I'm afraid you can't bring snacks into the class. I'll hold those. Cheetos. Wow, didn't see that coming. Wait a minute. Cheetos? Kind of a random specific brand to name drop, huh, movie? In fact, this thing gets brought up a lot in this movie now that I think about it. Hold on a second. Ugh, what is this? I'm Ad in the middle of my movie that is disgusting shameless what kind of society have we become to have product placements blatantly displayed on a kids film how dare you ruin my viewing experience by grinding the story to a halt and insert a sponsorship ad what i didn't say it wasn't effective a man's gotta eat and uh, come on it's not like I'm about to do the same thing. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that helps you build your own ideal website. Whether it's for your business, your brand, or for your own personal use, Squarespace has you covered. Squarespace is so incredibly easy to use, even my grandmother can figure it out. Hi, Grandma. Who are you? And what are you doing in my house? <clears throat> Share, advertise, and showcase your work with Squarespace's powerful blogging tools. Whether it's to show off your incredible photography, riveting stories, or simply present your videos, Squarespace has all the tools you need to update, categorize, and even schedule your posts. You don't even have to worry about starting from scratch because Squarespace also offers flexible, easy-to-use website templates. With various designs readily available, you can make any template do what you want and look what you want on any given device. And if you ever find yourself having a hard time coming up with fancy words or structuring a certain in sentence, they've got you covered there too with the all new Squarespace AI, a writing assistant which uses natural language to help you get from a blank page to your first draft instantly. A lot of you guys don't know, but I actually majored in multimedia, so web dev and web design is right above my alley. <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say Squarespace makes everything so much easier. Here's the website that I made in less than an hour. No more coding for this guy. So go ahead and give it a try. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash beanie to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash beaniebryan or click the link in the description down below. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. During a parent-teacher conference, Leo overhears a couple of dads mention the lifespan of Tuataras being just about 75 years. After a pretty funny flashback montage, Leo would realize that he's only one year away from reaching his expiration date. <laughs> Okay, look, it's not mean if they're doing it on purpose, guys. When a man has to face that he's about to die, never got to show my slick moves to a girl. <laughs> ah, what happened? Turns out, Miss Salinas is pregnant and will be missing some time. Which leads us to meet Miss Malkin, a hardened, cold, old-school, no-nonsense substitute teacher. She then assigns each student to volunteer to take turns bringing home a class pet. Side note, don't you just hate it when teachers do that? When they force you to volunteer? Like, hey Kevin, I volunteer you to answer this math question up on the board. Like, bitch, that is not how volunteering works. Do we have a volunteer?
<gasps> nah, that's not really what happened, but I pay good money to see that shit. Hearing all this, Leo sees this as an opportunity to escape and finally live out his life as a free lizard out in the Everglades. Oh. Zip, I escape. Maybe climb a tree, swim in the sewer, see the Everglades. You think a rock potato like you can survive there? You'll spend your last days hiding in a beer can. Lucky enough, he gets picked by a student named Summer, and off he goes home with her. Remember to change your colors and blend in. That's chameleons. I'm not a chameleon. Oh, well, then you're a dead man. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Later in the movie, left alone in Summer's room, Operation Escape commences. Though close to freedom, Leo's efforts fall short as Summer spots him escaping and finds out he can talk. Now, for context, Summer so far has been set up as the class motormouth. She never shuts up, doesn't know when to shut up, and people are always seen being annoyed and bored of her. So, of course, Leo begs for Summer not to tell anyone, which might be a problem. Even then, she still doesn't shut up. As a last-ditch effort to convince her to keep the discovery a secret, he mentions that only she can talk to Leo because she's special. And this would actually lead to Summer opening up to Leo, ending up with a genuine heart-to-heart -heart talk between the two. This leads to a song where Summer shares the reasons and causes on why she keeps talking. And Leo responds with his own advice. And you'll notice later on that this is gonna be a reoccurring pattern for this movie. That's right, Summer is actually not the main human character here. It's pretty much all the students. They actually take turns taking home Leo. And that's pretty much the formula for the whole movie. It's a pretty safe and generic formula to follow. But by the third time, it kind of gets repetitive and the shtick feels like it goes on for a bit too long. But before that, we get this scene. Let me, let me clean that for you. <laughs> what the fu- Anyways, Leo gets picked again to be brought home by another student, this time by Eli. And the same thing would happen to him, similar to what happened with Summer. For context, Eli has been shown to be a child of overprotective parents, having a literal drone following him around and pretty much controlling his life. And let me just say, the drone is probably the second funniest thing about this movie behind Squirtle. They made it to a point that the drone would represent helicopter parents and the drone's quick movements and overreactions completely sell it. Which is exactly what Eli's musical number is all about. A letter to the drone. Which is basically an open letter to his parents but we'll keep it literal for now. It's probably the best song in the movie but don't get it twisted, the bar was set very low. But yeah, Leo would convince Eli to break up with his drone and the drone's reaction to being broken up is so simple yet so effective you can't help but actually give a genuine laugh. <laughs> oh my god, I'm enjoying this movie. One weekend later, Leo would find himself back in school and still in captivity with Squirtle. Leo gets brought home, he starts talking to the kids, he tells them they're special, they vent their feelings, he solves their problems, and bada bing bada boom, he's back in school. This is basically a movie about kids having Adam Sandler as a therapist. Leo would keep entertaining them though to the point where pretty much all students befriended him and each one genuinely believes that they're the only ones Leo talks to. They've grown such a bond for him that they even end up smuggling him gifts and goodies even after class. Not gonna lie, that's weird as fuck. Squirtle would call him out though, implying that he's just scamming the kids into thinking that they're special. And once they find out, it'll only end badly. Okay, though Squirtle has a point though, does anyone here actually believe that in a room full of 5th graders, not one told anyone that they talked to a fucking lizard? On the following week, we're told that everyone in class already had a chance to bring home Leo. So, to even things out, Miss Malkin would force every kid to bring home Squirtle instead. Which oddly enough, everyone disgustingly refuses. For some reason, every kid in this class seemingly hates Squirtle so much. So much so that they outright negotiate with Miss Malkin about not bringing him home. Which is completely unprompted. Not one of you have met Squirtle yet except for this dude. So why the sudden hate? I get that they're kids and that they'd rather have Leo than Squirtle but Squirtle hasn't done anything to be rejected this hard. He gets so disrespected that Miss Malkin makes bringing him home a punishment. Yeah. That's where the conversation landed. The two parties agreed that if the class excels through the school year and wins the academic cathalon, then they don't have to bring home Squirtle and they can play with Leo instead. What a bunch of... 
snitches. This class does not deserve praise. Turtles have feelings too. Turtles matter. Squirtle matters. Justice for Squirtle, god damn it. So, because I guess the kids really don't want to hang out with Squirtle, they actually end up excelling everything across the board. This even impresses the school thinking that Miss Malkin was the one who motivated the kids to do all this. Imagine being a teacher for 40 years and for the first time the class excels, they give credit to the fucking lizard. Squirtle, understandably, would just about have had enough of the disrespect and deliberately sabotages Leo by secretly filming him talking to other students. Jesus Christ, you're telling me that many students gave their phones to a fucking lizard so here's where the movie kind of just doesn't care anymore squirtle would send the video to everyone in class exposing leo as a liar and of course they're all pretty upset felt like i was actually making a difference this year would have been a nightmare without you helping me miss malkin's so mean Talking to you made the class bearable. Goddamn, what the fuck is wrong with these kids? Miss Malkin just got caught by a stray. We get the liar reveal cliche where the main characters pout and everyone's mad at each other, blah, blah, blah. But one thing this movie does differently though is that it doesn't really grind the movie to a halt. Miss Malkin would actually take Leo to her home. And I honestly don't know why she needed to take him home. All she ends up doing was scold him, but then she kind of just starts venting to Leo. And just like Leo with the kids, they'd have a breakthrough and Miss Malkin would soon realize that teaching should make her feel happy like before. With a big smile on her face, she promises to Leo that she'll take the kids all the way to first place of the academic catalog. Speaking of which, on to the next day, we see our fellow students participating in it. And of course, they actually end up doing really well. So the class do end up winning it all, but they can't help but feel incomplete without their tiny therapeutic lizard friend. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, the movie's gonna be over now, right? The kids realized Leo was only trying to help. We got Miss Malkin to change her ways. We won the academic catalog. It's a happy ending, right? All the movie has to do now is for Miss Malkin to pull out Leo from her pocket and bada bing bada boom, the kids are happy and we all get to go to Magic Land Park. Yippee! Right? Well, too bad you thought that because there's still 40 minutes left. Yeah, so we still actually have a third act to follow. We actually get a quick twist where after the win and getting all the credit, Miss Malkin would suddenly betray Leo and drops him off to the Everglades, leaving him for dead. Miss Malkin being somewhat of a twist villain was still executed and handled 10 times better than any recent Disney movie. And oh look, the Everglades! The fact that this is the second time I'm talking about a movie that takes place in the Everglades is crazy. Does this mean we finally get to see Leo try to survive through his shenanigans out in the wild in a wacky fun act? Action pack Everglades adventure? Well, no, he actually plays dead for a good chunk of the third act, but the drone is back! So Miss Malkin would lie and make up a story to the students about Leo moving on and running away. Squirtle smells bullshit though and with the help from the drone, off he goes to save Leo. He actually apologizes and would rat out Miss Malkin to the kids. And with a little quick heartfelt speech, this convinces everyone to have a change of heart and go find Leo, even Miss Malkin. Oy. This is an actual scene from an actual movie, folks. Someone had to animate this. Poor soul. Back in the Everglades, Leo finds himself in trouble as he's cornered by a group of alligators. The kids arrive just in time though and swoop in to save him. We get a whole emotional lovey-dovey scene where they all reunite and turns out Leo is not gonna die after all. Yeah, apparently Tuataras can live up until 100. I don't know why Leo didn't just Google that critical piece of information. You had like 7 phones in your cage, my guy, and not once did you try to Google search? With everyone safe and sound, we fast forward days later to the kids' graduation. Situation. Everyone gets to say their goodbyes and Leo offers his final advice. You trusted someone to hear your problems. That's all we need. So don't keep it to yourself. Find your Leo to talk to. They're ready to listen. I promise they'll make you feel better. <laughs> That's actually a really good advice. Congratulations. Meet your new students. This is good. We're finally gonna learn the alphabet. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, maybe the movie wasn't that bad. 
I gotta admit, it does start to grow on you. It starts out all wonky at first, but it kinda starts to find its footing later on, only to get batshit crazy near the end. The kid characters aren't the most complex characters in the world, but they do serve their purpose well. You do start to develop a liking to them, and same goes with Leo. The advice he shares within the movie do sound sincere, and it does feel like it's advice coming from a genuine place. Plus, the script doesn't feel bland, the jokes are funny, and the animation is pretty good. Pretty detailed even. Though I do wish the songs could have been written better, hell, it could have sounded passable, it doesn't really ruin the whole experience for me. To be honest, I pretty much got caught off guard on how much I actually got invested in this movie. It's a pretty good time. Will I be re-watching it anytime soon? Nah man, I think I'm good. Will I remember it in two weeks time? Probably not, no. But it's still a good watch. If you have an hour and 30 minutes to kill and happen to stumble across this, I'd say go ahead and check it out. It's no masterpiece, but it's something. Just not an 82% certified fresh something, Jesus Christ. So yeah, Leo is a surprisingly good time with funny gags and colorful animation. So I'm giving this one a 5 out of 10. That's for today's video. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Have a great day and a great life and I'll see you all next time. Bye!